AEW star Eddie Kingston may be legitimately injured after a match with New Japan Pro Wrestling this weekend, which also saw him being attacked by the Elite after the match had concluded. There could be a major change to WWE Premium Live events coming in the future. At least that's what the UFC CEO Dana White has revealed in a press conference. More details on who advanced in the King and Queen of the Ring tournaments over the weekend at WWE Live events. WWE reportedly is looking to replicate the France crowd atmosphere in the United States, and Jinder Mahal reportedly could be in line for some big bookings after his WWE release. Hey guys, welcome back to Rest News 365. Hope everyone is doing very well. As always, there are plenty of news stories to get into in the world of professional wrestling. Let's start off talking about Eddie Kingston and a possible injury ahead of his anarchy in the arena match at Double or Nothing later on this month. Now, let's start off with his match that he had this past weekend. At the beginning of the year, Eddie Kingston was a Triple Crown Champion, holding the Ring of Honor World Championship, the New Japan Strong Openweight Championship, and the AEW Continental Championship. On Saturday, Kingston lost his third and final title of that lineup as Gabe Kidd bested him in a no-ropes last-man-standing match at New Japan Resurgence in Ontario, California. His sorrows did not end with this match, though, as he was forced to suffer another indignity after the match was over. AW EVPs Matthew and Nicholas Jackson crashed the party at the Honda Center on Saturday. Joined by the scapegoat Jack Perry, Matt and Nick proceeded to assault Kingston. The Jacksons and Perry are central figures of the new elite, which also includes former IWGP World Heavyweight Champion Kazuchika Okada, though Okada was not in attendance for the attack. The Jacksons returned to New Japan for the first time since Wrestle Kingdom 13 back in 2019, which was the Jacksons' final match in New Japan before forming All Elite Wrestling. While they have competed on co-produced AEW and New Japan shows, the former IWGP Tag Team Champions have not set foot in a New Japan ring since their farewell match. Now, Kingston is supposed to face the Jacksons and the rest of the Elite in the Anarchy in the Arena match at AW Double or Nothing later this month, with Kingston wrestling alongside FTR and his former rival Brian Danielson to defend AEW's honour against the Power Mad EVPs. The Jacksons have had an increasing influence on TV's product, consolidating their power after attacking AEW CEO Tony Khan and their fellow EVP Kenny Omega. But it looks like things are not good when it comes to Kingston outside of storyline here because Eddie Kingston literally limped out of New Japan Resurgence. As I mentioned, Kingston dropped the New Japan Strong Openweight Championship to Gabe Kidd at New Japan's event and was banged up after the match. Now, Fightful Select are reporting that they have been told that Kingston got hurt to some extent on the table suplex spot. Kingston reportedly needed assistance after that, but was able to walk with a bad limp backstage following the match. Now, Fightful say they have no idea on the severity, but for those asking, Kingston was battling a legit injury following the match. So he is injured, but the extent of it, we still don't know right now. If we get any more details on that in the future, of course, we'll let you know. Now, some big changes could be coming to WWE Premium Live events in the future. Many people have enjoyed the fact that WWE PLEs are on Saturdays, but that could be set to change in the future because UFC CEO Dana White has shared an update on how WWE Premium Live events and UFC shows will be presented during TKO brand weekends. With WWE and UFC operating under TKO Group Holdings following the September 2023 merger, the two companies have occasionally worked together. The upcoming NXT Battleground event is an example of the two companies' synergy, with the WWE Premium Live event set to emanate from the UFC Apex on Sunday, June 9th. Dana White has now noted that the plan moving forward for TKO Weekends is to have a UFC event on the Saturday and a WWE event on the Sunday. During a press conference following Saturday's May 11 UFC Fight Night event, White said, quote, We already have those dates set up right now where Power Slap goes Friday and UFC goes Saturday. And then you're going to see Friday Power Slap, Saturday UFC and Sunday WWE. You'll start seeing that stuff too. Now, following decades of Sunday night pay per view slash PLEs, WWE President Nick Khan changed WWE's calendar so main roster premium live events typically take place on Saturdays now. Now, White didn't specify how often UFC and WWE events will share the same weekend, so there's still some uncertainty as to how much things will change, particularly on a regular basis. 
Now, every WWE main roster pay-per-view, excuse me, premium live event up to Bash at Berlin in September is scheduled for a Saturday, but July's NXT Heatwave event is slated for a Sunday night. So again, we'll have to wait and see indeed how all of this does play out Um in the future of course we get any more details on it we'll let you know but speaking of this synergy between wwe and ufc could we see more ufc fighters enter a wwe ring well dana white has commented on the possibility of ufc stars working for wwe addressing Derek lewis's recent comments Lewis recently voiced his interest in appearing for wwe noting that he's currently in talks with the pro wrestling company Lewis currently competes in the UFC heavyweight division, most recently scoring a victory during Saturday's UFC Fight Night event that White was talking at. Now, during this post-fight press conference, White noted that he doesn't have a problem with UFC contracted fighters wrestling for WWE. White said, quote, I would do anything for Derek Lewis. I really like Derek Lewis a lot. Listen, some of the fighters who fight here have always dreamed about doing a WWE match or whatever it is, and I don't have a problem with that. I didn't have a problem with that when Vince was consistently effing me for no reason and now that's not the case anymore i obviously would absolutely do it so dana white saying he has no problem do you think this could mean that we see more ufc fighters transition over to wwe in the future now, this past weekend, we saw more developments in the King and Queen of the Ring tournaments. Uh, WWE's King and Queen of the Ring tournaments continued over the weekend with matches featuring LA Knight, Santos Escobar, Kofi Kingston, Rey Mysterio, Tiffany Stratton, Mitchin, Maxine Dupree, and Shayna Baszler all taking place at WWE uh, live events over the weekend, as I mentioned. Now, when it comes to people that have advanced as well, well, certainly this is very interesting stuff. Now, the Saturday show, as I mentioned, which emanated from the McKenzie Arena in Chattanooga, Tennessee, saw LA Knight defeat Escobar to advance to the quarterfinal stage of the King of the Ring tournament. Elsewhere, Stratton overcame Meachin to progress to the next stage of the Queen's portion of the competition. The Sunday show, which took place at the Macon Centerplex Coliseum in Georgia, Kingston and Baszler emerged victorious in their matches against Rey Mysterio and Dupree respectively. Now Knight and Kingston joined Gunther, Ilya Dragunov, Jay Uso, Randy Orton, Carmelo Hayes and Tama Tonga in the quarterfinals. Knight's next match is against Tonga who's been on a path of destruction since debuting in the company and aligning with the bloodline. Meanwhile, Kingston will have to contend with the might of the record-breaking former WWE Intercontinental Champion Gunther. Stratton now faces tough competition in the form of the highly decorated Bianca Belair, who handled Candice LeRae on the May 10 episode of SmackDown. Baszler also has a difficult challenge ahead of her, as she will go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Sky, a former WWE Women's Champion, in the next round. Jade Cargill, Nia Jax, Zoe Stark, and Lara Valkyria make up the other participants following their victories on Raw and SmackDown, respectively. Now, one person that did get pulled from the tournament was Zelina Vega. It just looked like certainly that this uh, tournament on both the men and female side has just been decimated by injury, unfortunately. As I mentioned, we know that Shayna Baszler advanced in the Queen of the Ring tournament, but Zelina Vega was set to face Baszler in this first round match at the Super Show event over the weekend. Unfortunately, Vega, a former Queen of the Ring, the first ever Queen's Crown winner, had to drop out of the tournament with Adam Pearce taking the X to confirm that she is injured. He said, quote, Zelina Vega will not be medically cleared to compete tonight and therefore will be stepping out of the Queen of the Ring tournament, which is unfortunate given her past history as Queen of the Ring. It would have been nice to see her try to regain that crown, but the injury bug strikes again, which opens the door to opportunity for one Maxine Dupree, who will receive the biggest opportunity of her young career as she will step in tonight against Shayna Baszler. Of course, as I mentioned, uh, she did end up getting defeated. Now, this isn't the only injury to rock this year's festivities. Bobby Lashley was pulled from the King of the Ring tournament and replaced with Angelo Dawkins, who lost his first round match with Tama Tonga. Of course, Drew McIntyre also pulled from the tournament as well. Um, again, very unfortunate that several stars missing out on the tournament due to injury. Now, still people are talking about the atmosphere in Lyon, France for the episode of SmackDown as well as the Backlash France premium live events. Now, over the weekend, last weekend that is, WWE headed to Lyon, France for Friday Night SmackDown and WWE Backlash. Now, one thing agreed upon by many fans is that the crowd was the star of the show. And one reaction in particular piqued WWE's interest. In a dark match after Friday SmackDown and prior to his World Heavyweight Championship match with Damian Priest at Backlash, Jey Uso received an incredible reaction from the 
the crowd, where they would use their phone flashlights while doing Uso's signature yeet taunt during his entrance. Now, those that Fightful Select's Corey Brennan spoke to in WWE production note that Uso's reactions were received incredibly well within WWE, with the company planning to heavily push fans towards mimicking the Leon crowd for Jay's entrances in the future. Now, Fightful have been told that the crowd lighting will continue to be dim during Uso's entrances, and any examples of Uso's seems being played in the mainstream will continue to be showcased on WWE television. So again, we'll have to see if WWE is able to pull that off. And finally, Jinder Mahal has been released, of course, from WWE several weeks ago, but reportedly he could be in demand on the independent circuit. Now, numerous top independent companies plan on reaching out to Jinder Mahal for independent bookings, according to Fightful Select. GCW hasn't exactly made it a secret that they are interested, and Black Label Pro and AIW have posted interest publicly. Fightful has also told that there is interest both overseas and in Canada, and the fact that the Bollywood Boys, aka the Singh Brothers, are prominently featured on the indies won't exactly hurt the matter. So, We'll wait and see what happens with Jinder Mahal in the future. But there you go, guys. The latest pro wrestling news for you. Be sure to smash a like on the like button. Be sure to subscribe bottom right-hand corner. As always, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. And I'll speak to you again very, very soon. Hey, guys. Thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video. Or click the bottom there to subscribe or the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much. And I'll speak to you again very soon.